What's up guys, it's Alexis. So today I'm gonna be telling you how to not only pass your HESI on the first exam, but also get an A. So I took mine in February of 2023, so I did take the updated version of this year, and I got a 90. If I'm being honest, I did not think I did this good. I knew I passed for sure. I was pretty excited and happy that I got an A, because it's really, really good, you know? Especially for your first time. Check out all the quizzes I have down below and the practice tests. And also watch Nurse Shy's video. And I promise, I promise, promise you'll make a good grade. I only studied for like a week. And I didn't study every single day, eight hours a day. Like I would only study maybe a couple hours and definitely not every day. So I was a little procrastinator, but hey, I still made an A. Just go in there confident that you're going to make an A, that you're going to pass. And, you know, try not to have anxiety behind it. Also, during the test, you cannot go back and answer, so you can't skip and go back and look back. Once you finish the question, you're on to the next, and you can't go back and look and look at all the sections you have. I'm pretty for, pretty sure for the anatomy and physiology um, section, there's only 25 questions. For the critical thinking, I think there's 30 questions. For vocab, reading, and math, there's 50 questions. First section, math. You're gonna need to know military time and I only had I think like one question on military time but for a math and vocab section I'm gonna say go to Nurse Shy's YouTube channel because I did not remember anything from high school about math like I didn't remember jack shit and her video helped me out so much it's a long video but she goes over everything and that's what helped me get a 94 in that section because I would have not been able to she shows you like all the times and also how to write the times because there is a different way to write it also conversions are going to be on there so i didn't really have that many questions on conversions but just like remind yourself of them because again i didn't really remember them just know like feet yards miles inches definitely know the gallon man which is pretty easy to remember i think two cups in a pint two pints in each quart four quarts in a gallon um, 128 ounces in a gallon, um, eight cups and or eight ounces in one cup, and 30 milliliters for one ounce. Okay, so just know your little conversions. Look at the different charts and stuff. Um, again, Nurse Shy also goes over that. So improper fractions are also going to be on the test. Multiplying fractions, dividing fractions, adding fractions. I'm going to go ahead and write this down because um, Nurse Shy goes over this. But this fraction rule really, 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 really helped me. And subtracting or adding fractions, the denominator has to be the same. So you have to find the least common multiple. Addition and subtraction of fractions, the denominator has to be the same. So let's say we have 7 over 9 and 3 over 4. And you have to add these. Okay, well, we can't add that. So the least common multiple between 9 and 4 think 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 the first one that comes to mind is 36 which is 9 times 4 so 36 how do we get 36 to 9 we multiply that by 4 so we also have to multiply the numerator by 4 7 times 4 is 28 over 36 plus 4 how do we get to 36 times 9 numerator times 9 3 times 8 is 27 i mean 3 times 9 is 27 9 times 4 is 36. So 28 plus 27. I don't know that off the top of my head. 8 plus 27 is 55. 55 over 36. And you can simplify that out. I don't think that can be simplified, but that would be your answer. And same thing goes with subtraction. You subtract them. And then when multiplying fractions, you don't change anything. So with multiplication, if it's 3 times 4 and 11 over... I don't know, seven, some random. You don't have to change anything. You just multiply. 33 over 28. Boom, that's your answer. Dividing fractions, you have to flip the second one, which is the inverse, and then you multiply. So let's say we have one over two and three over one. You're just gonna flip this, one over three, so it's gonna be one over two, times one over three one six that's simple 
Again, Nurse Shy goes over all of this in detail and gives multiple examples. So if you just watch her video, you'll be completely fine. Decimals will also be on the test. Just know how to divide decimals, multiply decimals. Um, to make it easier for me, I always would just um, divide like as a regular number and then just put the decimal place right back in the place that it's supposed to be. Percentages will also be on the test, so just know your percentages. Nurse Shai also goes over that. But most of the test is ratios. And I forgot ratios from high school, but it's really simple. It's basically a fraction. A fraction. So if you see this, if you see 12 1, it's literally 12 over 1. If you see 3 4, it's literally. Three over four, but again, Nurse Shy goes after over all this, so just watch her video. And the same for vocab, Nurse Shy goes over a bunch of words. Um, I, I'm sorry, I didn't remember all the words that are on it, but I know for sure the words that were on mine were abstain, agus, and seize. And the way they do the questions, how is this word used? Like, what is the meaning of the what is the meaning of this word in the sentence? they asked and um, a lot of the questions were like what word is best used in a sentence and they give you a bunch of words so um, most of the tests I did like educate a guess because honestly the vocab was kind of hard but hey I made an A so just use your brain do an educated guess for critical thinking I honestly did not study for critical thinking or reading at all um, but critical thinking like most of the questions were I honestly forgot some of them too, but I'm gonna leave a quiz down below. I'd say like half of the questions or most of them were like, who should the nurse assist for whose injuries are worse or whatever, and it'll give you like, Carrie came in with urine in her blood. Greg got a scrape on his knee, da 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 da. And you just have to make an educated guess and pick whichever one is worse, da 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 da. They have different questions like that. But again, on the quiz of critical thinking, they have a bunch of questions. I think there's like 200 something. You don't have to go through everything, but you just use your brain. That's really it. Use your brain. Use common sense. For reading, like I said, I didn't really study for it, but most of the passages, it's pretty easy. You have the passage right there in front of you. Most of the questions are just asking what's the main idea, what is the author trying to imply, what is the theme, and the last section was anatomy and physiology. And I know everyone thinks anatomy and physiology is so hard. I flew through that section so quick. If you just study the Quizlet and you just know your basic terms you'll be fine i promise so you're gonna need to know your directional terms superior inferior distal medial anterior posterior just those it's simple you need to know some um bones and muscles like i remember um like which bone doesn't articulate with any other bone this hyoid bone hyo hyoid boy bone and then they also had one of the muscles in the quad femoris like the vastus lateral lateralis vastus femoris all the question was like where is this muscle located which is in the quad femoris but just know your muscles right there you're not gonna have to know all the muscles of the body it's not gonna ask you but just know specifically the quad femoris you're gonna need to know the body cavities to know an anatomical position which if you're taking the SC exam you should know anatomical position Saint forward, palms facing anterior. I'm gonna have to know that the master gland, the master gland is the pituitary gland. I have to know the name of a soft spot on a baby's head, which is the fontanelle. You're gonna have to know which vessel does the blood return from the lungs. It is the pulmonary vein. Just look at the quizlets I provided down below. Um, also, the practice test. Um, for grammar, all I did was take the practice test and excuse me baby I'm talking for the practice test like don't get discouraged if you make a bad grade on the practice test because the questions aren't going to be the same so just retake the test until you feel confident in them and you start to remember more of the answers but like I said you guys will do great just go in there confident and study everything that I'm putting down below I promise if you study everything that I'm putting down below you will do amazing okay me and my baby wish you all the best and I'll see you in nursing school.